I grew up predominantly around black folks in Southeast San Diego, the C City Heights area. I have always uh, participated in black art forms or, or whatever you want to call them, right? Hip hop music. I was on a San Diego slam team, spoken word slam team. This is in the mid 2000s. This is, this is bef this, before they called it woke, they called it conscious. Mm, okay. Before it was DEI, it was, it was conscious. And the black folks I grew up around were on some of the same systemic injustice, structural racism thing, but they didn't assume every white person was racist. They didn't gotcha. hyper generalize white supremacy and whiteness as in and of itself. So they would challenge me and would say stuff like white, 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 um, white privilege and all these sorts yeah. of things. But they would never tell me, oh, you're racist and you're a colonizer and you're here because you're trying to exploit black people or black art. They were like, oh, no, you're invited to the cookout and you do art and you're good at spoken word. And so, you know, at one point I was. I, I was traveling with the spoken words. I was the only white dude in that scene, one of the only white dudes traveling with these folks. And, I was, and I'm pretty, and you can still look up some of my spoken word on, on, on the internet. And so a lot of these folks were sociologists, had sociology degrees, black studies degrees, all these sorts of things. Mm -hmm. And what happened is something interesting. One of my mentors, who's a Christian, I actually had him on the channel. Well, I, 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 I kind of debated him and it got, and it got caught steam. I don't know if it's still up, but it's uh, when I debated a pro-choice Christian. So this is, this is someone that's like, professes to be a Christian, but is on the left. Like he's pro-choice. And this is six, seven years ago. I don't remember how long ago. Anyway, this person has, is still a sociology professor, but more or less, like a lot of us, has been forced to the right. Mm. Do, 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 so, so what I'm saying is the folks that seemed like there was, they, 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 were, they were on this same tone with the race conversation 15, 20 years ago, are now in their own sociology department. These folks have now been pushed to the right where this person who's a mentor of mine, I don't want to say his name because I don't want to, I don't know if, you know what I mean? People can go do the research. Yeah. It's basically like, because you're Christian, you're homophobic, you're trans, and, and you have subtle white supremacy within your own. And this is a black dude. It's wow. a black dude who's a sociology professor I that 15 it. years ago was, was, was the, 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 the progressive voice. Yeah. And now those folks are pushed to the right and ostracized by their own quote unquote allies and progress in these institutions. Yeah. I don't want to name names. So that to me is fascinating. Now, the only critique I would give to the film on the macro scale is this is an overcorrection to an overcorrection. What set this domino in motion? Hmm. Did Robin D'Angelo and Kim D start in a vacuum somewhere? Or were they the more fringe and radical voices of the people that came before them? Who came before them? The actual legal scholars of critical race theory, not CRT, pop CRT, that Vody wrote, wrote a straw man book about, like actual critical Delgado, these folks. Th these folks came on the back of this. And what do those folks came out of? They came out of the civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. They came out of a movement that did everything nice and everything polite and did everything right and still saw injustice after they got the uh, 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 civil rights passed, yeah. they still saw disparities and injustice. And we all assumed it was fixed, but it wasn't. You know what I mean? Yep. And so the 80s war on drugs and all these other things, it, it did disproportionately affect black folks. It disproportionately affected my in-laws. They got sucked into the war on drugs, went to prison, that then impacted my sister-in-law, that then impacted my family. So to assume that like these, Robin D'Angelo was just like, in the forest somewhere and came up with all these ideas from nowhere. No, 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 no. She's an overcorrection to the overcorrection mm. of the overcorrection. Gotcha. And and so the question becomes, and, and and it's absolutely connected to Marxism. It's absolutely connected to Marxism. But what is Marxism in response to? And I am not a Marxism apologetist. I come from the real Soviet Union, really grew up in the, in the communism. But what was it an overcorrection to? And what is this stuff an overcorrection to? Mm. And I think the more people can get to the root of these conversations, no, I don't think America's race to its bones. No, I don't think that systemic is rampant and everyone is and white fragility. I, I don't I don't think any of that stuff. But to assume that we don't have a history and that we haven't it's been complicated and messy and that there haven't been uh disparities and that we haven't there aren't still issues today. Yeah. The most logical is uh police brutality. Mm -hmm. Like the George Floyd stuff wasn't in a vacuum. That stuff, there was police brutality. And what we should have done is said, hey, you know, police brutality actually affects white folks more. We should all want to fix this. Yeah. You know, Latin folks get affected more per, when we're talking per capita as black folks, but when we're talking about gross numbers, it's white, it's white folks and Latinos. Yeah. Why are we as conservatives not saying, hey, 
Ty- t- tyranny is bad. Yeah, yeah. Poli- police bad state. police is bad. Police state is not good. Police state is not good. <laughs> Yeah. If like and so it's like here's 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 a here's a crazy fact. Like they're gonna come take our guns. Yeah. And then, and then you have a thin blue line on your on your truck. It's like who's gonna come take who's your guns? Who's gonna take your guns? Kamala's gonna write the bill. Right. But who's gonna come the and go are pick them up? Take yeah. guns. So here's another one. We are we hate bureau- bureaucracy. We hate the inefficiency of the federal government. We think it's gross. We think it's a waste of time. We hate anything of as conservatives, myself included. Mm-hmm. But we're okay with the a uh, uh, death penalty system that is the most inefficient way of taking someone's life. Firing squad. That, that by the way, mm-hmm. over 200 people within the last 50 years have been put to death that were, that were exonerated after the fact. This is a real number. Yeah, that's not good. 200 people. This is real people that were exonerated after the fact. Like, actually exonerated. They did not do it. There needs to be, like, an airtight system for that. Huh? There has to be an airtight system. So it's like, so, so, so this is the hypocrisy of the right. And this is the part that's frustrating. We'll say, yes, bad police, FBI, bad, witch hunt against Trump, bad. Yeah. But killing innocent people and being sloppy with mental health crisis, ah, they should have complied, bro. They should have complied. Bad, big government, bad. Bad, bad, big government, big government, inefficient, bad. 200 people taken out by the death penalty. That's a highly inefficient, highly expensive, unnecessary process. We look the other way. That's the issue that I have. The deeper issue is that Matt Walsh, as much as I love him, isn't willing to concede an inch on this conversation. Mm. He is not willing to concede that, that that there is some precedent to what happened post-2020. Yeah. And it's not just black folks made it up. Mm-hmm. Black folks just woke up one day and said, no, th- there was definitely people that capitalized and built businesses on it. And I think that's disgusting and wrong. Yeah. But this stuff wasn't in a vacuum. This stuff has been brewing all the way back to to um, when we first got access to video cameras and Rodney King got brutally beat up and what happened in that case they got they got off yeah on camera what happened after that over okay. over correction watch riots yeah right watch riots and then they exonerated OJ yuck yuck so this stuff isn't in a vacuum and this isn't that long ago war yeah. on drugs is not that long ago the CIA now we're going we're going to get into uh conspiracy theory the cia being complicit in allowing cheap cocaine to flood the streets in los angeles to fight communism this stuff wasn't that long ago and this is and this is i i they they admitted they were complicit they admitted they were complicit <laughs> deep state 24 yeah, that's crazy. Shout out to Sunday Cool. Shout out to Sunday Cool. Ninjas man. and Butterflies. Cool, um, cool, cool sticker. I don't we like, actually I talked like. about all this stuff. And Ninjas and Butterflies were with me. Ninjas, because you know they do a lot of Netflix. And they were like, oh, it's 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 a fact that the CIA not was only complicit, was a part of bringing in the cheap to pod- flood the streets. When's this podcast coming out? Sounds uh, I think next week. Nice. And so corruption is bad, mm-hmm. even when black people are disproportionately affected by it. Mm-hmm. Corruption is bad, even when it's not just Donald Trump who's negatively impact, impacted by it. Mm-hmm. I don't know about you guys, but I'm exhausted from the culture war. And that's why we are running the first ever Bless God Summit to equip, empower, and inspire people to be the solution to the culture war, to be the hands and feet of Jesus on this side of eternity. And at the first ever Bless God Summit, we are going to be talking about what it means to live a better story and build better culture. And hearing from speakers such as my man, Alan Parr, and his wife, Jen Parr, from the Beat YouTube channel. My man, John McRae from What Do You Mean, Dr. Sean McDowell, and Preston Perry. And this will all be happening in Carlsbad, California, March 27th, 28th, and 29th at the beautiful Western Resort and Spa. To get more information, including the full lineup of speakers and access to tickets, go to blessgodsummit.com now. Misuse of people's bodies against their own autonomy is bad when it is babies in the womb and when it's over 200 people that were innocent and yet got the death penalty. So when so so I think that's the that's the tension that I live in is that um this stuff didn't just come up out of nowhere. Robin D'Angelo is a byproduct of a of a bunch of nonsense, but that that but it didn't all start as nonsense. Yeah. And and is it fueled by Marxism? Yes, but what was Marx addressing? What was Marx addressing? Marx was addressing that the people that owned the capital 150 years ago 
w- was exploiting workers. Mm-hmm. You can't say that that wasn't a reality. You can't say people working for pennies a day and children, child labor and the Industrial Revolution didn't have a negative impact. You can't say that our freaking education system where the people are trained to be little worker bees is, does not have a negative consequence. So it's like, I think what happens is we wake up in 2024 with a modern lens on all this stuff and all the opportunity and all that kind of stuff. And then we, and then, and then we act like everything is to here and now. Yeah. And by the way, if you guys want to see examples of real, real, go and look at some of the comments when I had my conversation with Ed oh, and yeah. go and read some of the comments on that video and really? go and read some of the comments of black people this and black people that and black people are violent and we need to be separate from black people. Really? Yeah. On our channel? So, yeah. So like, miss me with the racism doesn't exist. I think we all know racism exists. I disagree that it's perva- as pervasive as the left wants you to believe. Yeah. I think I think that's nonsense. Uh, but as someone that is is was in these worlds, has all have always been the conservative guy in these circles. Mm-hmm. Even when I was uh, more center left, I was still the conservative guy in these circles. the The reality is, and, and and the reality is that like this stuff's not in a vacuum. And so I think that's the part where like I wish that there was there was an inch more given to the race conversations besides the Democrat plantation. And they destroyed the black family because that's the only thing that a Thomas Sowell would concede on. And I like Thomas Sowell. I think 99% of what Thomas Sowell says is, is, is solid. And that they put a Thomas Sowell quote in their race isn't dead, but it's on life support. I agree with that. So I think that's the only part where I was like, there has to be just a tad bit more um, concession given by conservatives on this. And I just don't see that. And when everyone falls in line and they all sound like bots, um, I just think it's trash. And so there's a couple guys that are like Delano Squires, who works for the Heritage Foundation, Project 2025, who will... Like concede some of this stuff, yeah. you know what I mean? There's a couple conservatives that will. Uh, uh, Coley in New York talks about the racism in the gun laws. Like, if you want to talk about race, oh yeah, look at the origin of our gun laws and look at who they were trying to keep guns from, and look at where they still are trying to keep guns out of people's hands. About to turn me into a Chicago, in, in, into New York, a, a, dang, a dang civil rights activist right now, you know. And so, um, there's 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 all these things, but but yeah, I don't think I don't I think I, I'm with the conclusion of his movie. I think the conclusion of his movie is great. I think this stuff needs to be exposed. I, I I don't agree with the idea of America's race of the bones. I don't think there are any laws on the books. However, when people say systemic, they don't always mean that. They might mean that laws from yesteryear affect us today. Um, Breaking Points had a conversation with Matt Walsh. And one of the things he brought up is what about the um, disparities of housing appraisals? Mm, yeah. Right? So you, you we might say there's no thing as systemic racism. Okay. I, I'll concede that. What do you do with the reality that when a black family puts a house on the market, and this is unequivocally proven, a black family puts a house on the market, and all of a sudden it's appraised less if there's black photos left in the house and black pictures on the house than when a white family puts a house on the market. And then the same black family will then take the ha- take, take that same house and take the pictures down, and they won't leave any pictures up, and all of a sudden the house is appraised more. What do you do with that? Is That's that crazy. Is that not systemic? What do you do with black-sounding names getting less callbacks for, for job interviews? Matt Walsh's response was, that's classism. It's something. It's something. Something's going on. Something's something's happening. You know what I mean? Stop. This is, but this is the point. This is the argument. So you got to be able to steal me on the other side. Yes, it's illegal, but that doesn't mean it doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. That's the whole point. Things are illegal, but there's still patterns that we could see. Yeah. Right? So, yes, to uh, intentionally appraise a black home less than a white home, mm-hmm. that's technically illegal probably, but that doesn't mean there's not realities to this sort of stuff. Yeah. So what do you do? So what do, you, so what do they do? They go, oh, you know what? We had our black family photos up. We took those down. The house was appraised more. When we took those down, we're going to go sue the appraiser. Who's going to do that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Who's going to jump through those hoops? Who's go, who, what, what guy named Jamal is then going to call the, the job and say, I lied on my name and I said my name was James, but when I was Jamal, you wouldn't take my interview. I'm suing you. Middle name. Right? Yeah. So that that's what I mean. You know, uh 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 You guys can interview a Zach Sprazo. <laughs> but all I'm saying is uh, the, the only point I was trying to make was that there there does seem to be remnants of some of this stuff in those two examples I gave you. I give you other examples. Yeah. You know what I mean? I give you other examples. I would say that's probably why uh What is a Woman was a stronger film concept because it's it's significantly more undisputed. Yes. Whereas, you know, there's some gray area. Um I think I still actually still have to go see what is a woman, but um, by, the, by the way, the character um, here was pretty great. Uh, someone asked about the appraisal thing. You guys could see Patrick, but David had the appraisal conversation. He mm. and, and to be honest, he got torched. 
Patrick but David brought on super wokester far left I can't think of his name right now um oh gosh he had this conversation and and it was bad like he was in over his head he tried to debate the guy and he got torched he got torched shout out to CP the artist he said because people don't want to live around black people I'm black and own a and, and I'm a home and own a homeowner I'm in uh Del D Kalb County Georgia it's cheaper and so, yeah, I don't listen. I can't speak to who does and doesn't. I I, I think the appeal to motor fallacy is generally unhelpful. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Uh, but I think the 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 sentiment is probably true among some people, or or at least the data would suggest that. You know what I mean? All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here in beautiful Carlsbad, California. That's the beach right behind me. And some of you guys have been asking about the first ever Blessed God Summit. Well, I am ecstatic to announce to you that we have confirmed the venue here at the Carlsbad Weston Spa and Resort, just a few miles from the beach, right next to Legoland. This place is phenomenal. I've been on staycation here with my family, and I can't wait to show you how awesome this resort truly is. All right, so I'm here on the lawn right outside of the ballroom where the Bless God Summit will be happening here. We'll be getting to hang out, have opportunities to mingle, build with some of the speakers. And this is not just a destination conference. This will be the solution to the culture war. As we're coming out of a tumultuous 2024, our hope is to empower, inspire, and equip you to live a life that blesses God by living a better story and building better culture. So we're not just gonna be sitting down for eight hours a day and having speakers pour into you. That will be some of it, but this will be an interactive, creative approach to make sure that the information and the transformation hits you in a way that has an impact and empowers you to be the light and the salt that Jesus talks about in Matthew chapter 25. While we're more divided than ever before, while nihilism and despair is spreading everywhere, we wanna make sure that we come together and give you guys an opportunity to grow in hope, to grow in faith, grow in vision by our incredible lineup of speakers. We have Dr. Sean McDowell, who's going to be speaking. We have my man, Alan Parr and his wife, Jen Parr. We also have Lila Rose from Live Action, as well as my man, Trizzle Fitness, giving you the practical implications of what it means to honor God with your body. And of course, my man, Preston Perry. In addition to those speakers, we have Ryan Horton confirmed to lead worship. We have a special performance by America's Got Talent winner, Dustin Tiavella. And we have a whole additional lineup of speakers and performers that we're in the process of confirming right now. So the event's gonna be here in the Grand Pacific Ballroom, but if you have kids and you're like, ah, they're gonna make noise, feel free to hop right on over to our family overflow room. Now, some of you guys may not be familiar with Carlsbad, California, but for a little bit of context, we're about 40 minutes from the San Diego airport, about an hour from the Orange County airport, and about an hour and a half from the LAX airport. We're about a mile and a half from the beach, and you hear that noise behind me? Well, that is Legoland. And this property has its own entrance right onto Legoland. So this would be a great opportunity for those of you guys that have families to come out, plan a vacation around this, take the kids to Legoland, and enjoy the beautiful weather Carlsbad, California. And if you're single looking to mingle, we have a special event planned just for you. Now, in terms of lodging, one of the coolest things is you can stay right here on site at the Westin. We have a limited amount of rooms blocked off just for you guys at a slightly discounted rate. And there's also other hotel and Airbnb options in the area. So go to blessgodsummit.com happening March 27th, 28th, 29th. We have a limited number of VIP tickets that are gonna be packed with all kinds of perks additional things you can get into. But if you just want to get a general admission, go there as well. Bring your family, come hang out with us, and be the answer to all the craziness that's happening in the world today.